Welcome, good everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me introduce my team over here. I'm sorry that we were late by 20 minutes, thanks to our inefficiencies in our lab. Um, but I'm ready over here. On my left is uh, Andrew Gobriel. He's a cardiac anesthesiologist and imager who's an outstanding imager. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. He's going to talk about the imaging. I have over here, what's your name? Ralph. <laughs> it's Ralph Roscone. Yeah. He's one of the mafia leaders of this place. <laughs> you have Ryan behind from Bob, uh, Boston Scientific. You have Asma, my PA. You have Richard, all, all the nonsense people are around the place. Say, hey, guys, say hi to everybody. So with that, I'm going to start uh, them uh, talking about the case, and I'll start Asma to present the patient. Okay, we have a large uh, interventional heart team here. Um, we have Dr. Carr and Dr. Andrew Gobriel on anesthesia who will be doing TEE. Um, and my name is Asma Husseini. I'm a PA. Next slide. So this is a 69-year-old male with history of GI bleeding. He recently had a stroke last month with vision loss while he was off of his blood thinner. He has a past medical history of mitral valve repair in 2018, Very history of congenital pyloric stenosis. He underwent I'm bowel surgery, septum. and he's had prior stroke in 2022 with right-sided weakness. So in February, he presented with acute GI bleeding and was taken off of Eliquis and was placed just on aspirin. So in March, he presented with acute vision no. loss Can you get and was at, found oh, to have sure, a new sure. stroke. So Plavix was added. And so the patient's been on aspirin and Plavix. CTA was performed and it confirmed that the appendage was not surgically ligated and there's no evidence of thrombus in the appendage. The echo showed that he has normal LV function and no significant valvular disease. Side, so the I'm gonna take you to Dr. Side. Gabriel who's gonna show you the TE images from today. Hi everybody, yeah, we're, we're about to cross the septum here. We're looking for a posterior and uh, so we are about to do the, yes. So Gabriel, do you want to show the pictures of the septum? Yeah, we're right so there. So I'm using a BRK needle. I've got a venous axis, and I'm quite low on the septum, and I think I'm quite posterior. What do you like? I, I think it's a good position, right? Yeah, you're as posterior as you can be, it looks like, in the yeah, right So image. I like to do a low and posterior puncture. So uh, can you get the bovi, please? Can you apply the bovi energy? So I usually use the bovi. Uh, yes, go ahead. And I'm just going to gradually advance the needle through. And I think I'm through. And you're through yes, there. Right yep. across. Yes. And uh, just give the heparin now. How uh, much? What, what's his weight like? So let's give him about six, seven thousand 7,000 of heparin. 7,000. So I've advanced the transeptal sheath inside. So make echo large and fluoro small. Yeah. Or, or make us small. Make, That's probably good um, enough there. Can you hear us? Can you switch the order to make flow echo big? Whoever's in the camera sorting it out, can you make echo big? That's good. Make fluoro uh, and me less smaller, and then the fluoro also on the side. There you see the tip of his too. catheter. He's going to be pretty close to the left pulmonary upper vein. Upper left corner, please. Fluoro also, please. Okay. So we're advancing a wire inside the left atrium, but I nearly need to show fluoro, please. Okay, you can show us only in one person. Yes, okay, that's great. So the first thing is we are going to measure left atrial pressure. And... Um, Jose, can you get some gamma decks ready, please? So the left atrial pressure is about about four. So it gives him additional fluids of seven. Yeah, I've given so him almost a liter so far. So he's given an additional fluid because yeah. if we measure the left atrium. Uh, with this pressure, it's not good. So we're going to actually increase uh, the left atrial pressure 
Otherwise, we, we, we tend to undersize the appendage, which we don't want. Um, so I'm just going to make a little better view there. Magnify it a little bit more so they can see it. That's good. So now I've got a transeptal sheath inside the left atrium. And I'm actually going inside with a super stiff wire into the pulmonary vein. So now we're in the pulmonary vein. I'm going to take out the sheet. Yeah, you see him go entering now here advance, on echo as well. Yeah. Uh, 14 French single curve watchman sheet in the left atrial. Let's just take that out, Ralph. So, Gabe, do you, do you want to show us some of the uh, yeah, sure. I, I the appendages? We took some measurements of the appendage here. So, Gabriel, uh, you can show us some of the images of the... Um, okay, yep. So this is our, our zero degree. We've got a maximum uh, width at the base of about 18, and that's about the max we get throughout. This is your zero and 90 explained. Can you speak about we don't see any there? any we don't see any clot there. Yep. I would actually measure it slightly higher up. Yeah. So bring it. And higher then these up. are multi-view shots. We use uh, 3D to get some NPR um, measurements here. And there you see the 0 and, and 90 there. And if you take this, these planes here, sorry, one second. There we go. Oh, that's because it's a, a stored image. All right, we're going to advance the sheet inside into the left atrial appendage. And now we're going to get the dilator out. Keeping the wire intact. So again, that's our 45 and our 135. So if you take your planes here. I think you're a bit low. I think your measurement should be a bit degrees. higher up. So we've got the and Then, uh, then you get your inside. zero and not your 90. Yeah. Ryan, what do you think? Ryan? Big tail, please. That's, I think, higher than where, where we're at, actually. So we're getting the pigtail catheter inside the sheet, and then I've, I'll retract the sheet and the pigtail together and in, advance it into the left tail appendage. So. I think uh, you could have gone a tiny bit higher in your measurements, but it's okay. Are you talking to me, Saibu? Yeah, you? I'm talking to you. Move the blue line up a little bit? A little bit higher, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, a little bit higher up. The blue. Go, uh, higher up here? Yeah. Okay. So now we are, uh, we've got the pigtail inside. And now, yes, come out. And we're going to now Yeah, advance. that's 19 there. Right. And that 90 is is the, our biggest at 19. I, mean, I think a 24 is a, the right size for him. But. Okay. So um, I'm going to uh, now. Can you show me the short axis? Yeah. Live. And with the help of Echo and Floro, I'm going to go inside the atrial <laughs> appendage. So I'm pulling back the catheter. And you'll see slowly I'm retracting back just a little bit more. Saibo, you want to do this in uh, 2D or X-plane or uh, No, no, it's or okay. M M MPR. For 45 is great. Okay. Can you find the sheet for me? There you are. Uh, show me that. Is that going posteriorly? I think you're getting hum hung up on the Coumadin ridge there. I think you need to pull back yeah, yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, that's right. I've got to pull it back a little bit more. There you go. Now you're clear. Good. Perfect. Right. And you're in. Now nice I'm in job. the appendage. And now let's go to RAO uh, 20. So we're going to go to RAO 20 and Coral 20. And um, let me see. Like that. Can you call him, call him a little bit? Yeah. All right. Ralph, be ready for injection. So now I'm going to do an angiogram of the appendage. Okay. So you see that the sheet is not... I'm going to try to put the sheet into the anterior lobe. By what I do is I'm going to counterclockwise the sheet a little bit. Test. Very good. good. You're in there. Nice. That's in a nice position. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do an angiogram. Inject hard. Good. 
Yeah, I was actually thinking bigger, you guys. I would measure the 135 real life because I think it's go higher up. And I would measure it again because I'm thinking of using a 27. So let's get a better measurement. You see, we usually like to measure accurately and go up there, uh, not so high there, just at the circumflex. Right That's there. right. Yep. And then go up higher there, yes, and measure that. That's actually quite good. Very good. And re-measure the 135. So here's the 45 just for yep. reference. 18.2. 18 yep. That's and been pretty consistent. One. Yep. So 20. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. So 21. Basically 21. And if you look here in the bottom left image, you see the cross section of the base. Yeah. You want to show that measure? Make the largest measurement over there? So see, this is his, see where his catheter is? That's yep. the anterior lobe right there, right? So more posterior there. And if you want to measure, you can see the biggest we get it. It's probably something like that. Yes. 23, maybe. Almost even. 23. So the 23 means at least I have to use a 27 at four. So based on your measurements, I definitely have to. This is the advantage of NPR. And yeah, we didn't see, see this in 2D, you know. You wouldn't get this in 2D. So I, I would definitely, it's a shallow appendage, which makes it very challenging. And what we do in our case is we do not do pre-imaging pre before. We bring them on the table and we decide on the table. So 27, 12, can you take it? And again, I'll show this again. So this, the, we have our zero and 135 here. So that green line produces the zero. So why don't you make the red line? And then now if we want to make the, a... Yeah. Uh, Bring the red line uh, 40, into the maximum. Or, or sorry. So I, I'm sorry, 45 and 135 is what I meant to say. And now you have a zero and a and a 90 right there. No, I would make the zero la the largest diameter. This is zero. the zero right here, right? You see aorta flush there. And, and bring it down. I think the blue line's a bit too much high. So well, see, the that's blue. the adva advantage of this, right? When you, Because when we were measuring our 45 and 135, that was that was like this, right? Yes. And you said that was the level you wanted it to be at, and that blue line doesn't change. Do you do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. But I would. But I do agree that here in the zero, it looks like it would. That looks fine, but this looks high, right? Yes. Like you would probably implant it down yes. here, tilted yeah. this way, right? And that's too low. That's yeah. too low. So a little higher then, huh? That's tough. Yeah. All right. So we're ready to advance the device. We decided to use a 27 Watchman Flex. Let him prep it here. Bring it here. Bring it here. Don't do it there. All right. Attach it to the flush, please. So I went back to the 45 and 135 there. Yeah. And let's get our image and we're there. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you, you, is he de-added? Yeah. So we're de-airing the device. I noticed that I've, I've kept the pigtail catheter still in the left atrial appendage. Yeah, flushing. He's flushing the thing. That's good. And I'm just going to do one more contrast. Okay. It hasn't gone too deep. Now I remove the pigtail catheter. And once I remove the pigtail catheter, I have to be very careful without the pigtail inside. So I'm just keeping and now, now start giving contrast. Stop, stop flushing. And I'm advancing the device slowly, as you can see. It's going right inside the left atrial appendage, right over there. And now, a small test. Okay, a little more. Small test again. Good. So we're quite deep inside the appendage. I don't think we can go any deeper, right, Ryan? But but since we don't have much of depth, we have to start deploying from there. So we're in the anterior lobe. And the first thing is I create a ball. You can and see the ball in the bottom left. Yeah, yeah. Bottom showing. part yeah. and small test. And we can see we are right in the upper lobe, uh, superior lobe, anterior superior lobe. And I'm slowly trying to pull back and deploy the device. It's a little canted. Uh, but I don't think I can do anything about it. So let me see the contrast. I mean, it looks quite good. I'll take one more attempt. If not, I'm just going to keep it there. 
I'm re re uh, capturing the device uh, and then testing here. Okay. And it's still, it's slightly better uh, tilt. Okay, so let's go to every uh, field. So it looks nice to me. I'm going to do a tug test. Okay, tug test, go ahead. Yeah. Penny? Inject. Yeah, it's very stable. Looks stable on echo for what it's worth. Right. So now let's look at, let's do, do no, You're going to so, take some measurements? No, no. I would actually go to real time, not see because I want to do color. Okay, sure. So, so I would just go to. You don't want me to just no, get no, no, the measurement no. here like first? Okay. No. All right. So let's go back to real. That's it. So let's get a nice image there and see first with color. We're nicely at the level of the circumflex, and there's no, there's no flow around it. Now let's measure that. You see that it's here harder to get a true side view. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Bring See, some back. of this looks on FOSS. It looks close enough, I guess. I mean, if you want, you can, um, yeah, yeah, you should be okay. Yeah. You can measure that. All right. 23. 23. Explain that. And you could put a color. This is actually not a bad shoulder, actually. Not a spin. This is quite good, actually. Put color on. Okay. He's first measuring. I think he is over measuring here. Yeah, okay, good. 23. Oh, I like that very much. And you can see there's no color flow in the inferior aspect. And so you can this, decrease the scale to really accentuate it, but. Yes. And even that, and this is the most important view he's doing in the 135 and showing that there's no On both sides. Low, yeah, low flow nothing. on either side. Okay, that looks great. There's zero and 90. Let's do zero and 90. So zero looks very good. And he's taking a measurement. That's really nice. That's 23. So it's not super compressed. 24. Is that acceptable? Okay. And that's for color. The 90 looks like a, also good. Price is not as compressed, but I think it should be okay. And it's very stable. And there's no color flow. So I'm actually going to, based on these findings, I think it's reasonable to deploy this device. I think right? we meet criteria, yep. So there's no flow and I'm just going to unscrew the device over here. So the four criteria that we fulfilled, this is a beautiful picture, is position, anchor, size, and seal. So the position is very nice. It's at the level of the circumflex. We're going to do one, one angiogram. Just the last picture to show everybody. And you can see that there's a contrast going through the device, but not around it. So it should only be 2cc. Not a cc higher. All right, yeah. So it looks like, you see, just when we do it, we just inject like this. And it's, as you can see, it's just filled up quite good. So the procedure is done. We're going to take out everything over here. Um, and I'm just going to do the figure of a stitch over here. So I've just, I, can you show the groin? And I've got a uh, per close in the groin. I'm pulling out the sheet and I'm just going to pull the per close. And if I need, I may give an additional figure of eight stitch. So I just pulled it out. Uh, the venous hand is good. There's no, not much of bleeding in the groin. Let me just pull this out. And okay. Yep, there's no bleeding at all. So I think it should be okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, so we've, we've, so I'm just looking at the groin, if there's any bleeding at all. Yeah, there's no bleeding. So with a single figure of eight stitch, Sorry, I said actually single per close. It's all fine. Uh, we do the last images. Gorbel, do you want to show the last images? Uh, you want to show the residual ASD if there's anything left? Yeah, you just want to make sure you want to show there's no very right. Yep. 
Uh, and maybe you should just show one 3D and trace. And I you... did, yeah. While you were busy with your okay, great. access, I did that. That's good. I think I've done it before, once before. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Ralph is one of the senior techs over here. He's, he's an outstanding person and an outstanding Yeah, there you see, it's a, just a small small left to right ASD right there. Yeah. And we just make sure there's no effusion. So, um, I first want to thank everybody. And there is no room, effusion. Uh, to have helped us in this case. I'm sorry we were delayed uh, because of logistic issues. Uh, we do have, we do plan to do a second case a micro clip case, but I don't know whether we'll have time to show the whole case. Uh, but in the meantime, this patient has done well. He, he, was a, he was a person who absolutely needed an atrial appendage occluder, right, Asma? I mean, he had two strokes, right? He's had two strokes and um, he cannot, and in spite of blood thinners, and he also had a GI bleed. So he was a ticking time bomb. So the neurologist really wanted this procedure done. This, I think, is an absolute indication for this procedure. He is going to be on Aliquist uh, for 45 days. And after 45 days, we plan to do a transit of Jaleco. And if there's no leak and no thrombus, he's going to come off Aliquist for the rest of his life. Were we going to give him aspirin plavix or? Actually, so actually, the plan was I made a mistake. I mean, we're not going to Aliquist. He, he, um, neurologists wanted him just on aspirin and plavix. And so we'll keep that for 45 days and then we'll do a T. And if that's okay, we could come off and go to single handed platelet therapy. So thank you very much and um, for allowing us to present this case. And um, hopefully, you'll see me soon in the next case. What's that?